Hello, St. George's. Welcome. It is Monday, Thursday, and we're going to be spending some time together uh, celebrating this most important feast day uh, in our church year. Monday, Thursday is one of my favorite services of the church year. Um, this year, obviously, however, we're not able to do uh, the normal service the way we would like to, uh, with the washing of feet and the stripping of the altar and with Holy Eucharist as part of uh, that service. Um, but Monday, Thursday begins the, the Great Triduum, the three feasts of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Vigil, uh, leading up to Easter. So we're going to be spending some time together uh, just in a quiet service of devotion, for the most part following uh, the Eucharistic liturgy, but obviously not having Holy Communion. So let's prepare our hearts and minds together for worship. If you have a Book of Common Prayer at home, great. Uh, our service is going to begin on page 323. If you don't have a prayer book at home, uh, I encourage you to look up online. Go to bcponline.org and you'll find an interactive version of the prayer book on that website. So we'll begin our service now together. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and this will be uh, verses 1 through 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot that happens in Monday, Thursday. Um, there's the washing of the feet, which was featured in our reading just now. Uh, there's the stripping of the altar, where we take everything out of the chancel area and leave it bare and desolate. There's also a very moving uh, transition from light to dark. Um, and so there's also then movement from light to dark to the garden. Uh, so if I wanted to distill down um, some themes from Monday Thursday, uh, one is the table, and the second is the garden. Um, we're sitting here at my dining room table. Um, I know it's not the Lord's table, uh, but you are here in my dining room. Uh, you are my guest at my table. This is where my family enjoys our meals together, and it evokes that sense of mealtime of togetherness, um, which I realize stands in stark contrast to what uh, we're currently going through, uh, but the themes of entering into what was happening on that night when Jesus instituted the sacrament of his body and blood was happening at a table, and he washed his disciples' feet uh, around that same table, symbolizing their once and for all cleansing, and that there just need to be um, an ongoing sense of, of repentance, uh, but they are still clean, having been washed by him. And that's a wonderful encouragement for us, that we have been washed clean by Jesus, and that day by day our work is not to try to make ourselves clean again, uh, but to come back to him with repentance and faith, uh, that our feet might be washed afresh. After the meal, Jesus and his disciples leave uh, the building, and they go to a garden. And it's there in the garden where Jesus agonizes over uh, what is about to happen to him, his arrest and his journey uh, to his trial and crucifixion. Um, and so we are reminded of the garden um, that Jesus goes to, the garden of temptation, much like Adam and Eve uh, in their garden of temptation. And uh, there's a little painting behind me beautiful cherry blossom branch uh, to remind us of that garden. And as Jesus uh, departs and goes out of the city, um, as we uh, see him leave, it is, this, it is as if the light is departing. And so we move from light to dark. And if you notice behind me, uh, one half of the room is light and the other half in the back is dark. And so I've tried to set the scene uh, for this little devotion um, not just with my words, uh, but also visibly what's happening here in the space around me is intended to mirror in some way um, some of the themes that we come across at this point in Jesus's life. And really that's the, the, the drama and the beauty of Monday Thursday, are these great themes of meal, cleansing, garden, temptation, light, and dark. And we certainly have our share of these things uh, these days as we um, struggle to remain connected to one another, uh, but know that we are connected to Jesus by faith and that we will be gathered together soon enough, my brothers and sisters, uh, but not just yet. Uh, so for now, we must wait as we stay and keep watch with Christ. Amen. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page 326. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll close our time together uh, with the prayers of the people. Uh, the prayers are that we've been using our form uh, two found on page three. Uh, 385. Form 2 found on page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, for St. George's, for its clergy and leadership, and for all gathered here, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your poor prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We remember now especially all of our medical workers, first responders. We pray for all those who are affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those in our own St. George's family who are ill, who are isolated. Be present with them, O Christ. Pour out your healing mercies upon them. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. We pray, Lord, that those who during these trying times may be suffering uh, an affliction of their faith, a, a doubting of their faith, or just a, a reaching out for something greater than themselves. We pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them and that they would come to know you and trust in you. I ask your prayers for the departed. We pray especially for those whose lives have been lost in this epidemic. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving. Particularly, we remember those who are celebrating birthdays at this time and anniversaries. Lift up your prayers of thanksgiving to the Lord as we remember the many blessings that we do have. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that where two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this life knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. This concludes our service together. Tune in tomorrow night for our uh, devotional service for Good Friday, and then there will be no services posted for Holy Saturday. That will still be a day of Sabbath rest that we typically observe here. And then come back again on Easter Sunday. Easter Day we'll have uh, a beautiful service posted for you, and we'll also have our drive through church. Uh, come by the church uh, anytime between 10 and noon on Sunday. Uh, stay in your car if you enter in through the upper lot, drive by the front entrance. Uh, we'll be there uh, with Easter flowers and to pray for you and to offer up a blessing. 
um, and to hear a short reading from Scripture. So we'll have a chance to just connect, um, albeit in a very uh, safe and socially distanced way. Uh, so we'll look, I look forward to seeing you all uh, on Easter. Uh, and so until then, um, go in peace, and we will see you in a few days.